Now that you've set up your viewing environment, you're ready to tackle something that's very important. I want you to set up the default color settings for your work in Photoshop. It's so important that you need to do it now. Seriously, it impacts everything that you do in Photoshop. Things like color mode conversions, specifying colors, proofing colors, and even just reading color values on screen. So please do it now. I explain this in greater detail in a movie titled Color Management Settings, so consider this as a quick visit. To access the Color Settings dialog, type Command-Shift-K or Control shift k on the PC. In version CS2, they moved this dialog to the Edit menu. So to access it, go down and choose Color Settings. By the way, I should point out that if you use multiple Adobe applications, use Adobe Bridge software to choose a standard color setting, and then you can synchronize color settings across all the applications. But I'm going to show you how to do this inside of Photoshop. So your dialog might come up with a setting like the North America General Purpose setting. Now, although this would work fine for doing business graphics like slides and, uh, you know, just some random general stuff that you work on, and even web design, it's really not a good choice for doing any serious color work. That's for print work or photography. So I'm recommending that you change this preset to the North America Prepress option. And depending on the tool that's selected, some other valuable information as well, such as the X and Y coordinates when the marquee is selected, whether values are 8 bits, 16 bits, or even 32 bits per pixel. Here are some changes that went in with the new version. If you use the handy status bar at the bottom of the window, you can now see the same information in the info palette. Let's see how to set that up. Click on the arrow to choose palette options and you'll see the status information towards the bottom. In my opinion, the last four options are really the most valuable things to be previewing in the info palette at all times. I find these three to be the most useful. If you're an advanced user, you can safely turn off these two options, which are designed for the novice user. This option sets up the much larger color space called Adobe RGB as the default working space for all of your color work in Photoshop. I'll be explaining the role played by working spaces in a different movie, but suffice to say that using this particular choice is like having a box of 96 crayons available to you for your artwork, as opposed to a box of 8 crayons indicated by the previous choice. More choices, richer color. Go ahead and click OK to accept the settings. And next, I'll show you how to set up a very important tool that you'll be using a lot as you go through this tutorial, the Info Palette. This is accessed from the Windows menu or by typing F8 on the keyboard. Now, as you probably know, this tool shows you the color values right below the cursor. And click OK. And you'll see this useful information now visible on the Info Palette at all times. My next tip has to do with working with a neutral pasteboard or a canvas area around the image. It's nice to work against a neutral gray background instead of viewing any desktop clutter, or worse, pattern backgrounds or your vacation pictures as wallpaper art on screen. The best way to do this is to use a full screen mode. When you type F on the keyboard, you toggle between these two modes, which hide the desktop and the regular mode. I like to use the one in the middle, which you can also select from the bottom of the tool palette, because it gives you a nice neutral gray backdrop. If you think that the gray is too light and distracting on your system, you can change it to another darker gray. To do this, I'm going to bring up the color palette. If you shift click on the ramp a few times, you'll eventually cycle through and see the gray ramp. You can go ahead and choose any gray color that you like, then type G on the keyboard until you choose the Paint Bucket tool, which is nested along with the Gradient tool. Then simply shift click in the area, and it converts it to a nice dark neutral gray to be a wonderful backdrop for your colorful artwork.